We're here for the press conference announcing the athletes who will be participating in the Milrose Games. It's indoor track and field at its best. It's Saturday, February 14th, and it's at the Armory in New York City on 168th Street and Fort Washington Avenue. In uh, 2013, when you were the defending champion, you and LeMond came so close to breaking 350. Do you think there's a chance you could break it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the field is deeper than it was in 2013. Um, that being said, there'll be more guys to kind of push it along and, and be competitive in the later stages of the race. So I, uh, I think that's definitely a possibility. With this Bernard Lagarde, eight Wanamaker Myers, even, even more uh, awards, 40 years old. That is just so impressive. You remind me of one of my favorite athletes, Bernard Hopkins. Have you ever followed him? Um, he's, he, he's a fighter. He, he just turned 50. Could you wow. tell us uh, like what your secret is? Uh, the secret is actually listening to the body. You know, as I got older, I had tend to listen to my body more um, because with the intensity of the workouts, the, the training, the traveling, that can also have a toll in you. And so I listen to my body, but when it comes to training, I do the quality training that would actually enable me to do the best in terms of uh, competition. So that is the secret, you know, working so hard, making sure that I surround myself with people that are good, my coach, my training partners in Arizona, and you know what, believe that I can still perform at the highest level like I've done before without thinking, oh, I'm 40 now and I should slow down. It is a mental state when you start slowing down. Well, could be physical as well, but for me, it's been something that I always want to challenge myself against the young guys, knowing that I can still do this even at the, at the, at the, at the you know, later stage. And, and now there's a record on the line that could be beaten. We want to yes. fill us in on that? It is the uh, world record for the Masters, um, over 40. It is 358 uh, 15 by Eamon Coughlin, the great guy who ran, uh, runner from Ireland, who ran, uh, who wants, won to make a mile seven times. And so that is my record. Uh, that is his record. And I'm hoping to run that on Saturday at the <laughs> want to make a mile which I've never run the want to make a mile in, at the armory. So that's another thing also that adds the excitement of trying to go to the armory and run the mile. I've run the, two, the 2K, uh, 2 mile, 5,000 meters, but I've never run the mile at the armory. It's going to be exciting. Another opportunity for me to see if I can run and get that ninth victory. Maybe I can get that ninth. That's another thing too. That's, that's exciting. Yes. Hey, and to end this, you have a little fan group here. Your, uh, is your son going to be here? Or? No, he, um, unfortunately, my son has soccer, and of course, he has oh, school now. He's Just only, soccer. yes, he's a soccer player, and my daughter is a gymnastic. Is in gymnastics, so they did, were not able to come. But we Skype, we FaceTime, and so that is the thing that we have to do. And then after, at the end of the, the race, I'll be able to uh, call them and see. Uh, you know, and tell them, hey, Daddy did the best. You know, whether I win or not, I would be happy to uh, chat with them and share my experiences of the race. Thank you very much, and good luck. Thank you very much. I appreciate Thank it. You. Cheers. Mary, do you miss it all being on the track team in college? Honestly, not really. I mean, I, I, I think that I have the greatest team in the world, um, both literally in terms of our running and also just in terms of the personalities there. I mean, you saw Matthew and Shannon up there. They're a lot of fun. They're really funny. And... Uh, I love traveling with them, and I feel I get the same experience kind of as anybody in terms of just teammates. Mary, being a hometown favorite, welcome home. Thank you. Being from Bronxville up there in Westchester, yeah. you're hearing the crowd screaming for you, and you will be the favorite. Is there a chance being inspired by that with 200 meters to go? And really, would you push for a Milrose record? Um, yeah, I mean, the pace is going out uh, pretty much at, like, American record pace. Uh, my teammate Shannon Robery recently ran a 422, which is, and it was on a, you know, a flat track, and so I know she's in shape. My teammate Tremere, Tremere Moser has been running really good Ks and 800s with me, and I know she's in good shape, and Jordan, Jordan's always in it. So, you know, there's really four of us who can really threaten that record, and it'll just be exciting to see who comes out with it on Saturday. With the Shannon Roberry. Now you're going to be doing the uh, Wanamaker Mile yes. going up against Mary Kane. Yes. Okay, d d tell me a little bit about this race. I've raced the Wanamaker Mile, um, well, I've raced it 
the uh, the Armory Wanamaker Mile, uh, I think it was two, three years ago, and it's just such an exciting event. They get the lights dim, the crowd gets so into it, um, and the Armory is just a great facility to run fast. So I'm excited for the race on Saturday. I think it's going to be really quick. I think it's going to be really exciting, and, um, and I think there's a good chance that there'll be, if not, not only a bunch of PRs, but a shot at the American record, so... So that's very exciting. Yeah. Where are you training at? Um, I train in Portland, Oregon with the Nike Oregon Project. Oh, are, are you in school there? Or? No, I graduated from Duke um, undergrad and graduate in uh, 2008. I finished all of that. And um, I've been living in Portland for a little over a year now um, and working with the Oregon Project since then. Now, what makes this track so fast? I think, well, I think there's two components. I think the actual track surface itself is just you know, with it, with it being banked, so you get some help to get around the turns and the, you know, the bounce back that you get from the actual raised surface. So I think that makes a big difference. And then I think also just the intimacy of the venue, how it's, you know, the fans are right on top of you. There's the energy. Um, it's something I've always loved about indoor racing because I feel like it really, you know, the adrenaline, um, not only do you have your own adrenaline, but the adrenaline of the crowd kind of is infectious. Do you like indoor better than outdoor? Um... I love outdoor. Um, there's some really great races outdoor, but indoor is just really a fun, a fun environment, a fun environment, a fun atmosphere. Um, and going to Duke for college, we came to um, the Armory quite often to compete, and uh, it's hard not to love racing in New York City in a facility like that. How many hours a day do you practice? Um, I would say three to five, and then there's all the other hours of you know treatment and whatnot that go along with it. But um, so it's a full-time total, job, a full-time commitment. Yeah. And yeah. just to end, is it, this is your Mary uh, Kane is defending it. What, what, any strategy to? Uh, I mean, what? Uh, do you need to do to just be a little faster, quicker? I mean, Mary is a great athlete. Um, I have two other teammates racing as well, so all four of us are in great shape. And um, you know, with a pacer, I think we're all just going to get out with it. And then over the last 600 meters or so, it's just going to be a matter of, okay, who's who's got the most left in the tank? So, um, you know, I think it'll be a good night for the Oregon Project, and um, hoping I can be the one that come up comes out on top, but you never know. <laughs> well, good luck and have a great time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Sonia Richards-Ross. You are from New York City, aren't you? No, actually I'm not, but I lived here for maybe eight years. My husband played for the Giants, and so this is kind of my second home, but I'm actually, I actually reside in Texas, Austin, Texas. Oh, okay, so, but you're one of the favorites here, I, I, I hear. So tell us a little bit about this race. First of all, I want to say I love this outfit. Thank you, thank you. You know, I love to run, but I also love fashion and beauty, and you look beautiful too, so this is one of my passions too, so thank you so much. But I love competing here at the Millrose Games. I actually started competing here when I was in high school. I broke the national record on this track and so I just have great memories of running here and I have a tr tremendous fan base here. A lot of track fans that really love the sport and that have been supporting me since I've been pro for over 12 years and so I'm happy to come here and get a chance to run in front of our fans because we rarely get to run on U.S. soil. I'm running in the women's 400 meters. I run at 7.15 um, at the Army on Saturday, and it's going to be a great matchup. It's myself and Phyllis Francis. She's one of the young and up-and-coming stars in the 400, and so we're hoping to put on a great race and maybe challenge some records. And where do you train at? I'm actually trained in Waco, Texas. So my coach, Coach Clyde Hart. Uh, it was well, oh, what's his name? Clyde Hart. Oh. <laughs> I almost said, thought yeah. you said Hart. <laughs> My dad's name was Clyde. I never yeah. hear that name. Right? Yes, okay. his name is Clyde Hart, and he um, he actually trains down at uh, Baylor University. And he's been there for over 50 years, Coach Michael Johnson, Jeremy Warner, and myself, a phenomenal coach, great 400-meter guru. And, yeah, that's where I've been training for the past 10 years. Okay, well, good luck. And anything, Thanks, and what do you think you need to do to, to, to win this race? Um, well, you know, I've run here quite a bit. I know the track very well. I've been training really well. So I just think it's about executing, going out, running my own race, and finishing strong, and I should be able to win on Saturday. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks. Thanks. So let's take a look at these athletes, shall we? Um, I've had the pleasure over a number of years of knowing many of them through high school and college. So I'm going to start to my right with uh, Cam Levins from Canada. It was quite a double. Let me remind you, as Ray said, 354.74, if my memory serves me right, uh, for the mile. And then 30 minutes later, after a, a swig of water, 
I jog down the hall. He comes back, and I see him there warming up for the two mile. Not only does he come in and run the two mile, he goes and wins it. And uh, it was an astonishing performance. So, Cam, my question to you is, how do you follow that? <laughs> well, uh, hopefully with a really fast time on Saturday, and uh, you know, hopefully I can come away with my first win at the Melrose Games. Oh, yes. Do you have a time plan? I mean, Canadian record's 13-19, right? Yes. It's your own record, so it could go. <laughs> I, I'm hopeful, yeah. yeah. Okay. Next up, we uh, welcome... Um, they're sitting side by side, as you would expect, of a newly married couple. Um, Brianna Tyson Eaton. She's competing in the 60-meter hurdles. And, of course, she's the World Championships decathlon silver medalist. Brianne, how are you? I'm doing really well, thank you. So my question to you is, what day were you married, Brianne? <laughs> July 13th, 2013. And surprisingly, Ashton's better at this kind of thing. I always have to ask him how long we've been together. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still close, look. I like that. You still talk to each other, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, so what are your expectations coming into the, the Milrose Games, Brianne? As a heptathlete, uh, getting the opportunity to run against a world-class field doesn't come around all the time. So just really taking advantage of that and being able to you know, compete with some of these world-class hurdlers is important to me and also a huge confidence booster. I'm only going to ask them one question because it's coming back to you very shortly. So, sitting alongside Brianne, of course, is the Olympic gold medalist in the decathlon and world champion Ashton Eaton. He's competing in the 60-meter hurdles and the long jump. Ashton, you in good shape? I feel like I'm in good shape. You know, Saturday is Valentine's Day. You realize that? <laughs> I do so realize that. What have you got lined up for Brianne that you can tell us about? <laughs> The other day I asked her, I said, Brianne, can you help me plan Valentine's Day because I'm having trouble? And uh, she said, don't worry about it. So I'm off the hook. <laughs> uh, no, let's, let's just say, well, I'm planning two wins, hopefully. Okay. That'll be All my right. Valentine's Day gift. Next to Ashton. Gosh, I've known him since high school when he won the Two Miles National Outdoor Championships with a tremendous run beating Craig Forres. Um... World Championship Bronze and World Championship Silver. 2012 Wanamaker Mile Champion. And just what, two weeks ago at the Army Track Invitation, he ran a 2.49 uh, leg in the DMR to bring the world record to the USA. And he looked in good shape. And uh, before the race, I'd said to him, so what sort of time do you think you're going to run? And he went 2.52. So when he ran 2.49, I said, well, OK. He said, but I wanted 2.48. That's a competitor for you. Matthew Centrovitz. I did say t under 252, so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to go back to uh, Ashton over here, if any girl tells you don't worry about it, it means worry about it. So <laughs> I would I'd make sure you have something lined up besides your two wins. Is your girlfriend with you this weekend, uh, Matthew? Uh, uh, let's, let's get back to racing. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're a good crowd. They really are. Um, so what are you looking for, Matthew, apart from getting sixth place in that trophy? Um, you know, well, with a competitive field like this, um, uh, I was disappointed a couple years ago, actually, when I lost to Lopez. So I'd like to regain my Wanamaker title, and I think winning is the, the main goal. And then, um, like Ray said earlier, running at the Armory leads to a lot of fast times. So I'd also like to break my indoor PR and possibly my outdoor mile PR as well. So. And what are those? My indoor PR is 351 high, and then 350.5 is my outdoor PR. Okay. Okay. Sitting next to Matthew, a young woman I've known since, what, 7th, 8th grade at the Armory? Goodness. Seems like yesterday. Um, she comes here as the world junior champion of a 3,000 meters and the defending champion. Uh, she was a high school senior when she won the Wanamaker Mile. It's just extraordinary. And Mary will be in the Women's Want to Make a Mile, brought to you by the New York Roadrunners. There's something about Mary. There was a movie like that, Mary. I think you would fit in that category. How are you doing, Mary? Oh, very good, How thanks. are you doing? I should do it properly. <laughs> Welcome home. Thank you. It's good to be back. So it's going to be tight. If I look to my left, I see Shannon Robery there, who's clearly on fire, and uh, Trenia Moser, Jordan Hesse. I mean, they're all friends, but friendship gets lost at the start line, doesn't it? Um, I wouldn't say it gets lost, but maybe put 
kind of in the back of your mind. <laughs> Is there more pressure on you this year coming back? as a defending champion? Not that you know what pressure is. <laughs> um, I don't really look at it that way, no. I mean, you know, as I said last week, um, you know, I could come in fourth and run a really, really great race. And, uh, you know, this is the indoor season, um, and I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling a lot stronger than I did um, last year in terms of fitness. And I know the world junior record last year I came really close to. So we're going to be trying to run really fast on Saturday. And you know, no matter what, I'm hoping to at least dip under that and, um, you know, just be a competitor out there. And at the end of the day, um, you know, I want to win just as much as Shannon does. And she so way, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be good to, um, you know, see, see what sort of shape we're in and kind of go out there and, you know, fight each other to the line. So it'll be it'll be kind of comforting, too, to have a bunch of teammates with me, um, you know, since I know if they're in shape and they can do it, then that last hundred, I'll just be. Trying to outkick him a little bit. <laughs> so I come to you next, Shannon. Okay. <laughs> um, do you have any comments for Mary? <laughs> Shannon, I should add, as comes in uh, two weeks ago, she ran 4.22.66 on a flat track for the mile, which is the world leader, as Ray Flynn pointed out. And um, it could be said, Shannon, that you're in the form of your life. I certainly feel like it. I, uh, in speaking with Alberto, it's, it's surprising to me to feel like I'm in even better shape than over the summer when I was PRing in pretty much every event, which was such a, such a great feeling after, you know, a few years of just sort of struggling to, um, to make my mark. Uh, but yeah, I feel like I'm in even better shape than over the summer. So the summer brought me to sub four minute mile or 1500s, um, an 8.29 3K and a 14.48 5K, so I'm excited to see what I can do in this mile on Saturday. And I don't want to remind you of, of, of sort of... Um, bit, you were second to Jen Simpson a couple of years ago, right? So yes, I was. The win is big. I think big. it was 4.07 or something, so yeah. I'm hoping I'm in much better shape than that this you, time around. <laughs> you got that, Mary? She's in good shape, okay. <laughs> David Oliver. 2013 world champion at the high hurdles at 110, but you'll be doing 60 here. It's a mere drop in the ocean to you, David, isn't it? Yeah, you know, the 60 meters is cool. You know, work on your start in the first half, so. You in good shape? Yeah, I feel, I feel so. Uh, you know, I had to shut my season down last year. I had a foot injury, so training for a while, feeling good, and so I wanted to come out and compete, and plus, you know, it got me out of practice for a little bit, so I'm always down for competition, so I'm feeling pretty good. And you like New York, my yeah, recollection is. Definitely. Uh, you know, it's a great city. Milrose Games is a great event. And, uh, you know, the only thing that could be better is the weather. You know, I live in Florida, so, you know. Oh, you've been I spoiled. Be, yeah. Spoiled. <laughs> so, that's it. This should make you run faster. Yeah, to get back, you know, on the plane or go home, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> get back in the heat. Oh, you won't be taking in a theatre show then? No. I don't know, I might, you know, go on Broadway tonight or tomorrow or something. You know, I've never done that before. So, you know, oh. life's all about it, getting experience in different things. So, you know, I'm down for that. Okay. <laughs> well done, David. Next to David. Um, gosh, 2002, she won the 200 meters and 400 meters at the National High School Championships at the Armory. Fast forward to an Olympic gold medal in London. And... Um, you won this, what was it, two, three years ago, Sonia, this race? 2012, yes. So, am I right in thinking this is your only race of the season and it's here? Yes. What offer did Ray Flynn make you? I want to know. An undisclosed amount. <laughs> no, I'm just he made you an offer you couldn't refuse. Couldn't refuse. Okay. Um, well, good morning, everyone, first of all. Um, this is just a thrill to be here, to be among some amazing talent. Ray did a phenomenal job. And to see the youngsters, you talk about 2002, I look into the youngsters' faces and I think, man, where did the time go, you know? So, but um, it's really exciting to be back here. For me, of course, it's not about the money and the private planes that were, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's about Milrose. That's your husband's, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, Ray sent for me. No, I'm joking, but... The Mill Rose experience is just phenomenal. I've been running here, like you said, since I was in high school, like Mary Kane, and it's one of my favorite places to compete. 
I love the track, I love the people, and I know it's gonna be an exciting race, and it will be my only race of the season, excited to see where I am. To, I've been having great training off season, looking forward to a phenomenal outdoor season, so it'll be a great race, and to run against Phyllis, the youngster, I think it's gonna be really exciting, so I can't wait. Is she outside of you or inside of you in the lane assignments? I don't know yet. I'm gonna tell Ray put her outside so I can <laughs> gauge. No, she, it doesn't she, matter. She's outside of you. She, you're in five, I believe, and she's in six. Perfect. Thanks, we do Ian. what we can. Now we do I hear from it now. Yeah, thanks, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up is, is, of course, the American record holder. He's got such a resume, it would take me days to get through it all, but um, he won the Want to Make a Mile eight times, and he's won three titles since, at two miles, 5,000, and 2,000 meters, so he's got 11 titles. I think the, the, the most titles ever won is 13 by uh, Murchison. Was it Mur Murchison? Peter, help me out here. Ira Murchison or Lauren Murchison? Lauren, yeah. Okay, that's why Peter's put in that spot. But uh, I think he had 13 titles, so um, what can you say, Mr. Bernard Lagan? Bernard, welcome once more to another home for you, isn't it, really, New York? Thank you, Ian. So coming to New York is like coming home, so especially for this special event at the Melrose Games. This is special, and uh, I'm really happy to be here. And thank you, Ray. Thank you, New York Road Runners, the, um, <clears throat> Dr. Nob Sanders, for all of you guys doing a great job to bring us over here once again. And we're excited to go and do the job we know how to do that well. And then, of course, inspiring the young generation like these guys in front of us. This is really special, guys. Um, this is special for me to see you guys in front of us like this. And you know what? You guys are going to be like these guys up front here in the near future. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, I'm excited to be here, Ian. Thank you. Eamon's record. for I, I can't believe you're 40, Bernard. It's not right. The only time I thought you looked 40 was when you grew that beard when Sebco didn't recognize you. Do you know That's that story? He was one, where were you? You were somewhere, and we, Sebco came up and ignored you because he thought you were some old guy yeah, with a beard. He, yeah, I know. He ignored me in Deku. Uh, we Deku. were, you know, so. <laughs> Does life change at 40, Bernard? Please reassure us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, it changes because, you know what, I tell you something. You have no pressure running. So, <laughs> so you just go in there and have fun and enjoy it. And you know what? When you are out there training with the young guys, you know, at that stage, something that changes is that you're struggling to train with them. But the thing is, it brings the best out of you because, you know, you're not losing what you already have, but you have people to actually help you sustain what you have already. And I would say at that age, you are better than before. So I'm really having fun and I'm enjoying the process right now. 358.15. And I believe you got a message from Eamon in advance. I did. Um, once I ran uh, 7.48 the other day in Boston, which was a great event, actually. I'm really happy that I went there. And I received a text message from Eamon. To, actually, it was a direct message on Twitter telling me, congratulations on the record. And New York Road, I mean, Wanna Make a Mile in New York is going to be 3.54. And he tells me, I'm glad it's going to be you bringing that world record. So that was really awesome to hear from the world record holder himself telling me that I should be able to be. I mean, he, he's happy for me that I will be the one chasing that record. It's not given yet. I have not run 358, but I'm going to be working to, get to, 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 see, to, get, to see to it that I get it. What about these young guys, Bernard, to, as I look to my right, to um, Matthew? You going to take him on? Yes, you know what? Um, I'm sure Matt is going to have a lot of respect for the old man. So... Um, <laughs> So he's not going to really dust me that bad, you know, and, uh, and I guess I'm going to make a deal also with Nick, you know, with Will Lear and my training partner, uh, La Willa Lang, to kind of give me some respect, you know, I'm, I'm 40, so yeah, I earned it, so, you know, just let me go, you know, and, and, and win the event, so, you know, get my ninth, but with all seriousness, I'm really excited to be with these guys, and they are the ones that are challenging me, and I don't think it is the other way now. I don't think I challenge them anymore, but they are the ones that I always think about. You know, I'll be lining up against the great runners like Matt, and it's going to be exciting, actually. And, you know, it's something that I look forward to. So it's going to be a fun one to make a mile. I was, I was telling uh, Bernard uh, up in Boston about a week ago, I said, 
you know if you run 355 and, and get the world record, and if I run something fast like 350, you're going to get more press. And he looks at me and goes, and I should. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I think they're looking for some new comedy people on television, I believe. Um, one or two uh, retiring, seemingly. Uh, Matt, you could have a whole new line in the future. Yeah, yeah. With us is the president and CEO of the New York Roadrunners, Mary Wittenberg. Mary, could you tell us, um, how did the relationship between the Roadrunners and the Armory and Melrose Games develop? We've been working together for decades now, especially this last decade. The Armory is all about providing kids opportunities to run on the track, up in the greatest track in the world, up in Washington Heights at 168 in Fort Washington. And New York Roadrunners is all about giving access to running to people of all ages and all abilities. So we come together and work year round to provide really fun opportunities for people to get out and race at the Armory and run on the streets of New York. And so then a lot of uh, the New York Roadrunners also go up to the Armory? Yeah, actually a lot of the adults, our local club teams, practice up at the Armory a couple times a week. We have a Tuesday night at the ra Thursday night at the races at New York Roadrunners where any of our runners of all ages, abilities, can come up and have a good time, run on the track, go over to Coogan's for a little after race fun. <laughs> I've, um, I've heard of that, yeah, Coogan's. <laughs> actually great fun. So, uh, yeah, sure. And then they have, a, they have opportunities to race as well. In fact, there's master's categories where many of our local runners run really well. And I also noticed there's some children. Uh, there's a children's race uh, on uh, this, uh, this year. So the Milrose Games, you know, we came together um, to host the Milrose Games at the Armory about four years ago. And from the beginning, we really wanted to have kids be front and center. So we're excited about the fastest kid on the block, which is one of the races that we'll have. And it was really a pleasure to have the kids out today and meet the professional athletes. And they're gonna run the, the 55 meter dash. And hey, well, what about uh, your big event, uh, oh gosh, the marathon? Well, we have events almost every <laughs> single weekend of the year. Next up um, is the New York City Half on March 15th, running through Times Square. In May, we'll be running Coney Island. Um, we run the Brooklyn Half, the largest half marathon in the United States, our second largest. And then we, um, we go on to Queens in June uh, to the Bronx for the Bronx 10 September, the Staten Island half, three weeks before the marathon, and then the marathon. And those are highlights that really serve as um, ex special celebratory moments in what's really a year-round calendar of youth programs, uh, senior programs, and adult races almost every week. Thank you. A busy schedule there. Yep, it's great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Crystal Hart reporting on the Mill Rose Games. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the show, and we'll see you at the track.